Well, welcome everybody. Um, this session of uh, about 15 minutes is going to be on uh, economic development with a sustainability agenda. Right. So, uh, if you're here for uh, hemp-based water basket weaving underwater, sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so my name is Chris Yolanis. I uh, I'm, uh, live in, in Marin County and, and uh, uh, chair the Green Committee of the Chamber of Commerce. A pretty active committee. We work with the city, we work with 600 businesses in Marin, mostly in San Rafael. I'm helping them green their operations, get green certifications, uh, really drive um, uh, overall the sustainability agenda in Marin. Uh, I also teach um, at the intersection of, of entrepreneurship and sustainability, so I've developed some courses for local community colleges uh, as well as four year universities in this field. Um, I run a I started about seven businesses through the years um, uh, and run a, a market research and sustainability intelligence firm uh, called Communicate Partners. So that's what I'm bringing in terms of background. And, and today we're going to talk a little bit about how you as, as business leaders and activists um, can work uh, with your business community, with your city and, and county staffs, your public policy makers, uh, your businesses, in helping them uh, get, better, get green. How do you do that? So small, medium-sized organizations uh, need, a, need some help in, in oftentimes doing that. So um, when we talk about economic development, it's usually um, in terms of the actions of policymakers or communities promoting a standard of living, right? Economic health. So a number of, of counties and cities have economic development committees, right? And, and, and councils that are funded. Um, by typically by the state or even at a national level where they get grant money. Oftentimes those are, um, you know, development areas in terms of how we develop our, our workforce, uh, our community, our young people, uh, infrastructure around economic development and business. Uh, how are we going to be competitive as a region or as a city or county um, so that and oftentimes it's a zero sum game, right? We're trying to steal high tech companies or green companies from, from another county, right? Offering them in tax incentives or attraction. And, and uh, my contention is we don't have to have a zero sum game. That is, we can cooperate uh, you know, together to, to uh, uh, green our, our community. Oftentimes it's around, uh, this economic development is, is around sort of environmentally uh, responsible sustainability social equity, health, safety, those kinds of things. Um, and, and so, you know, the economic development folks, um, they focus oftentimes on creating new jobs, right? Um, and they work um, in financial programs or marketing programs, neighborhood development, workforce development, you've heard that term. So if you want to create a, a green job, a bunch of solar installers, for example, uh, auditors, um, let's train those folks and then get them out of the community. So that's what economic development folks work on. Um, oftentimes they're working on, on real estate development. So, for example, this place used to be Agilent and HP's a big, big plant, a big operation. And several years ago then, um, Agilent moved out and Cotting Investments uh, bought this place uh, with a mission of incubation of sustainable and, and clean companies, clean energy companies. Um, so down in Marin, we have something called the Venture Greenhouse, which I'd encourage you all to kind of take a look at. It's a, a spin-off from the Dominican uh, University, and it incubates green companies. So it's a pretty cool little operation. The trouble is that, that a, a lot of um, the focus of, of economic development is on business starts or on quanti quantifying things that um, don't distinguish between bad and good things. So like the BP oil pill, uh, spill uh, in the Gulf of Mexico, right? You know, if you sort of look at the impact of that, it actually positively contributes to the economy in that there were um, lots of cleanup activities and, and uh, reclamation activities, right? And that, that counts like in the GMP as positive. So some of these measures around economic development aren't necessarily leading us to sort of sustainable performance. Uh, doesn't it, oftentimes these, these EV goals don't uh, account for di the distribution of, of growth. And um, you know, if, if you look at America and, and how we distribute our, our, our growth over the past 30 years, 
um, most of that growth has gone to the, the top 5% of the wealthiest uh, households. The average households really haven't seen any uh, income gains. So we, we've got some problems around how we measure business growth and economic growth. Um, it certainly doesn't measure depletion of natural capital, environmental impact. Um, it doesn't reflect things that have you no know, market price, uh, but are good for society. So volunteer work, uh, parenting in the home, uh, certain education performance, GMP and typical ED economic development metrics don't, don't measure that. So we have um, you know, a pretty long list of sustainable related metrics, right? So on the economic side, it's around um, you know, trade and, and diversity, uh, disposable income on the social side. We, we like to measure um, uh, income distribution and unemployment and poverty. Uh, we, we look at you know, a lot of uh, wellness factors. Uh, and on the environmental side, we look at our use of uh, envir sort of natural resources. We look at uh, sort of the big, big four Ws, which I call waste, water, watts, and, and wheels. Um, wheels would be how many sort of vehicle miles that we're traveling around to get materials into our business or transport it out to our customers. So we look at, at a lot of these issues. So we got big agendas, don't we? You know, when, when, we, when it comes to economic development in a county with a sustainability agenda. And, and that agenda oftentimes is, you know, today is around zero waste, right? So how many of you are sort of involved in, in, in waste-related projects? Anybody here? Okay. A little bit. Outside of our own, you mean? Right. Yeah, outside right, of our right. Own. So, you know, within your sphere of influence, you're working on waste or recycling or composting. That's a, that's a big agenda item. Um, clean energy, right? Climate action plans. How many of you are involved in, in those with, with that agenda, right? Um, water conservation. Who's involved in, in, in water, right? Right? So, uh, water's the next carbon, isn't it? We've got to really pay attention to. <laughs> To driving conservation and reclamation, uh, and uh, in our in our business community, and and, uh, and, and, and encouraging. Them. Another one is, is around green buildings and performance, right? How many of you are involved in sort of helping to drive that agenda, right? Green buildings, building performance, um, and that's a big factor for for businesses in, in our local economy. Another one is around transport, right? So the use of of clean vehicles getting out of single occupancy vehicles into mass transit or into ride sharing that sort of thing. So that's a part of the, the, the business agenda when it comes to sustainability. Another area is around product stewardship, right? How many of you are involved in, in helping organizations around really stewarding their products through its life cycle? Anybody involved in that? So, so what, do you, what do I mean by product stewardship? It means that if you are creating a product or service, you're paying attention to its total impact over its life, right? So from sourcing of materials to, um, to production to use, right? So how is your product being used and what it's, what's its water and energy and waste impact? And then end of, end of life, right? So where does your product end up at the end of its life? Is it ending up in landfill to sit there for 750 years, seeping who knows what into the water table, or are you really stewarding your product for its end of life to come back to your organization to be recycled or to be reused, right? That's good stewardship. You know, you're paying attention to the entire life cycle of your product. So that's what I mean by, by life cycle. Um, local sourcing. Local sourcing means how are you managing your supply chain? Right? So as you look at, at all your suppliers, you know, whether it be you know, printers or PCs or the components in your product, how are they, where are you sourcing them? Are they coming from China with big footprints in terms of travel? Are they coming local? Are they coming from the US? Who is making that product? Um, can you make it a little more localized? Can you lower the footprint um, of, that, of that, that supply chain? So that's what I mean by local sourcing. Uh, local sourcing is, is very big, right, um, as, a, as, a, as a practice for businesses because we want to support our local economy. So if you spend a dollar on a local supplier, that money then gets typically recycled, right, in the local economy because 
that that supplier's employees now have payroll money and and they spend it on rent and restaurants and so there's this notion of a multiplier effect right for the local economy so it's not just when we say we're supporting local businesses that's that's the impact right you've got the multiplier effect for every dollar you spend on a local supplier and then finally we have something called certification and what i mean by certification is the greening of your business or your organization are you really credible in terms of how you're greening that business? And who says you're green, right? So America has about 350 eco-certifications. You can imagine why consumers are pretty confused and, and unsure of what's really credible or what is greenwashing, right? So greenwashing is an important part of marketing of your organizations. You want to greenwash proof your marketing, right? Does that make sense? So greenwashing, right, is making claims that aren't really authentic, not really true, appearing that you're, you're really green, but you're really not. So consumers are very skeptical about your claims. So certification means that you've got a third party organization that says, yeah, they've gone through a checklist, they've gone through a process that really certifies that they're bona fide, right? And, and so what are, what are common certifications that you all have heard of? Anybody? USDA, right? How about on the green or sustainability front? FSC. FSC, right? Forest products, paper products. Mm -hmm. What other certifications do you hear? There's the new one. There's the biofuel sustainability certification. Okay. Um, how about LEED? Anybody heard of LEED <laughs> in the building space, right? Um, how about certified organic? <laughs> right? So that is a, a certification that adds credibility. Um, how about energy stock? I heard energy stuff. That's probably one of the oldest and most credible. Yeah. Um, as part of the Leadership Institute, we just recently certified a high school as a green um, mm. high school. And Kevin, I forget his last name. Kumataka. Yeah. He, <laughs> his people are certified PETO. Yeah. I forget what, it, what they're It's called. the Sonoma County Green Business Certification yeah. Program. Mm -hmm. Great. Love that program. Marin's yeah. got the same thing. Um, and I'd encourage you all with your organizations to tap into that. Sonoma's got a website. So, you know, I'd encourage you all to take a look at that program. It's a, uh, Marin and, and Sonoma have similar programs and they have a, a checklist of things that, that you as businesses or schools, organizations can go through. So, let me make a, a modest proposal to you all and, and give you a little bit of food, food for thought for a, sort of an ecosystem model that um, perhaps you can use with your sphere of influence to really drive sustainable agendas in your organizations. And, and what I mean by that is a sort of an ecosystem of a public-private partnership. Um, and it's composed really of four components. It's, it's a local educational institution, it's a business network, it's a city and government policymaker group, and then it's a certification entity. And they're, they're all working together to really drive new businesses that are sustainably driven. They're um, driving new business to those certified organizations. They're, and we really want them then to thrive uh, by practicing triple bottom line principles. So this is what the, the model looks like. And we're, we're piloting this down in, in, uh, in Marin County. So again, we've got We've got four kind of components to this. So educational entity, you know, could be an environmental science, sustainability high schools, community colleges, could be nonprofit um, mm. forums, and we have several of them up, up here in, in Donna Marin. Uh, they could be executive educational programs and part of the four-year programs. Uh, green MBAs, right? So like Dominican or Presidio, uh, there are. Uh, you know, Sonoma State is, is developing more and more robust sustainability programs. So what do they provide? Well, they provide um, ongoing um, fresh students who can come out to local businesses and potentially uh, do assessments of op their operations, identify low-hanging fruit around uh, energy or water or, or waste uh, footprints. They can help shepherd a, a business owner through the green certification process. So this is a way that potentially students can be engaged uh, on an ongoing basis. And it's not just 
a, a month or two. It could be on, on an, an ongoing basis as a part of the experiential uh, part of a, 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 of a curriculum. Um, faculty can also act, act potentially as, as project managers. We have then a business network. And, and down in Marin, we're using uh, the, the Center Fell Chamber. That chamber has about 600 businesses in it. About 10 to 15 percent of those are certified green businesses, which is pretty high. We're trying to drive that up to 20, 25 percent. And so that business network, and it could be a rotary, it could be another association, but chambers are a really great entity. And what they provide are, are great sort of networks, right? So the chamber's all about how you can help one another with new businesses, right? And, and, and sort of support one another. So the chamber is a really good little entity to help drive new business to, to sustainable companies. Um, and then the, the other component, one of the, I mean the third component is around your city staff and policymakers. And those folks can provide recognition and award programs. Uh, they can offer ordinance suggestions, right? So, you know, ordinances and regulations that really help drive energy efficiency and waste reduction, that sort of thing. And then finally, a certification entity. Down in Marin, we have the Green Business Certification Program that's run by out of the county offices. Up, up here in Sonoma, we have a similar program. Um, and those, that entity can provide checklists, uh, legitimacy. Um, it can be the first step for a company's pathway to, to, to again, you know, full-scale uh, sustainability. So those are four again, components to this lean green uh, economic development model. And I'd encourage you all to take a look at this as, in terms of its viability for your own organizations and, and your own local economy and, and see if it might work. If, if you'd like to discuss that and, and bounce around some ideas, I'm available to talk about this. And, uh, and, I, and thank you for your attention and good luck to you.